I realized that from childhood, one thing that has always caught my interest is visual content. Um, I watch a lot of TV till today. I watch a lot of YouTube, Netflix. I consume a lot of content and I credit that to my education um, in this field that I am in. Now, who here is familiar with the 10K rule? Is there anyone? Mendoza? Okay. 10,000 hours. Um, the 10K rule is basically a theory by um, Malcolm Gladwell that states that for any field you're in, in order to term yourself an expert, you, have, you must have done uh, 10,000 hours of active work in that field. Um, so his math is 20 hours a week, every week for 10 years. Uh, and my math, that's 10,000 for hour, 400 hours, but we'll just, we'll call it 10K, right? And he's suggesting that repetition is basically what creates skill. Now, I would like to say I'm an expert, not in creating content, but in watching content, because I feel like I've done more than 10,000 hours. Um, now, I think everybody's wondering that you didn't get here by just watching a lot of TV, and you're right. But one thing I want to state is, these various TV shows, documentaries, sparked in me a curiosity, made me very curious to pursue what it was that was being done in these things, in these content. Why, why do I watch, why can I sit down and watch a full season of Fresh Prince? So why can I, um, why would I not miss Who Wants to Be a Billionaire on Thursday nights? Like why do these things make me feel so good? And that is what I've been pursuing in content. So a lot of things I've learned through content are relevant, and some things are very mundane. I've watched cooking shows, and to be honest, that's how I learned how to cook. Um, I learned mundane things like, if you put a drop of oil in a boiling pot, when you're boiling pasta, it stops it from sticking together. I didn't know that for the longest time, and I always wonder, I'll make pasta, and it'll look like cake, and it just be this congealed in a box. But just watching content kind of taught me things like that. You know, I watched um, shows like ER, um, and it, could, it taught me how to, to carry out CPR, you know? Um, it, I watched other content, like who wants to be a millionaire? That's how I knew that the capital of Romania and Bucharest. You know, there's so many things that I've been able to learn, not pick up from a classroom, but for some reason I know, and that's because of the consumption of content. Drilling deeper. We live in Nigeria, and a few elections ago, um, 2015, or earlier, it just was a bit earlier before that, I got very interested in why Nigeria is what it is. And I decided to look further into it. Um, I saw a couple of documentaries that kind of gave me a deeper insight. There's a very insightful documentary on YouTube called The Real Story of Nigeria. Um, and it kind of talks about Nigeria from inception up till 99. And as the, maybe it's because I'm a science student, but in Nigeria, I was never taught history in secondary school. So I, a lot of the information that I found out from that documentary was new to me. Or I watched another documentary from Vice that talked about Boko Haram, and it's embedded in the journalist with the military in the north and showed us what these people were actually going through on the front lines. Or another documentary I watched about the crisis in the south and embedded another journalist showing what people are going through. Now, this is, these are things that even us in our immediate society don't experience. And it's quite unfortunate that the only people being able to tell our stories, at least in the most effective way globally, are foreign entities. So this drives me down to Nigeria. Nigeria is where we, I think most of us are born in Nigeria. Um, I think we live in Nigeria, and I think this is somewhere that we need to actually place a lot of focus and attention on. 
Um, I'm about to give you some statistics. A lot of you probably know them, but uh, it doesn't change them. Nigeria is a country of 170 to 200 million. That's not a mistake. There's 30 million in between that. But that in itself is the problem. That you can't go online and find any reliable source to know how many we are as a country. So you are, if you're asking some of an estimate, 10 or 20 percent is an acceptable limit. But there are 30 million people possibly not accounted for, then how can you prepare for the realities that face us? Apparently, 70% are under 35 years old. Um, over half of us are the rural demographic, which is access to certain modern facilities. We have six geopolitical zones, and we're, we speak over 500 different languages. In this room, if I do a quick poll, I'm sure I can find out that um, there are more than at least 10 languages spoken by people in this room. And that is to show that this is a very diverse country. But also with diversity comes diversity of cultures and diversity of thoughts. Now, I have an announcement for you. The Nigerian formal education sector is growing. I'm in a school. So maybe this is not the best place to say A lot of things that you use in the real world, um, you don't learn from school. And that's fine. There's only a limit to how much you can learn. However, one thing that I learned from schooling outside Nigeria was not only the ability to learn things or to cram things, but was the ability to learn things that I had not before. So research, uh, the ability to think independently, um, all these things were posed as a method of learning as opposed to just sitting down, this is the book, this is the curriculum from 1995, and so on and so forth. So, Nigeria's formal sector, is, formal education sector is broken. I have a theory. I have something that I've always, not always, but the last few years I've lived by. And it's a philosophy I call micro solutions for macro problems. How many people agree with me that the problem of Nigeria is too much? Too many. A lot of people. Uh, do you believe that one person can solve all the problems that face us? Impossible. No president, no government. There's just too much. There's too much history to overcome. However, I'm a firm believer in this theory. And this theory simply states that um, as an individual, in every case you find yourself your school, your church, your street, your family, you should be able to make a positive influence to your immediate environment and change things within that immediate sphere of influence. If you're able to do that, and the theory is an optimistic one, it states that, given time and chance, eventually, all those micro-solutions are able to come together to form a bigger solution to solve our bigger problems. So if you're in Architecture, if you're in banking, if you're in technology, if you're in content, you're able to excel in your given fields of concentration, but you're also able to use that to partner with people who have come up with other solutions to solve a bigger problem. So an example would be banking. There's a huge percentage of Nigerians on bank. However, there are little things that have been done where the banking sector had a solution, the technology sector had a solution, they came together and they were able to form solutions for those people who don't necessarily want to walk into a bank or who necessarily don't have access to things a bank. That's an example of a micro solution forming a macro solution for problems. My sphere of influence is content, media and content. And so the only way I can talk to you today is from that standpoint. Multimedia. So multimedia content, when people hear that, um, begin to think it's something otherworldly or something bigger than it really is. Multimedia simply means multiple forms of media. TV, radio, online, digital, which is online,
print, social media, all these are multiple forms of media. And media simply means a way to communicate. So this is my solution. I've explained throughout my career and before how content has been able to influence my decisions, my curiosity, and spark me towards going through the direction which I am currently. And I feel that we can do this, um, especially not to substitute formal education, but while this is being fixed, use it as something, as a tool, as a language to help communicate various forms of information to those people who necessarily don't have the access. Now, I've already stated that one and a half of us are from the rural demographic. But as Nigerians, if we want to move forward, I think our greatest assets are our numbers. Like I said, we're over 170 million. And numbers mean a lot. But if we're going to progress, we have to do it as a collective group. So don't only really look at people who go to the same schools as you, go to the same classes, or go to the church, or live where you live. There are a lot of people who are disconnected, who don't necessarily have access to social media, who don't necessarily have access to phones. And I know what the statistics say, Nigeria is top 10 in internet usage. That's true. But for as many people as we have connected, we have many more who aren't. So how do we reach them? Non-complex, yet entertaining content that captures the imagination of the viewer primarily, and then subconsciously communicates desired messaging through multiple formats and platforms. Basically, what this means is that we're able to reach those people through multiple forms of media. And we're not doing it trying to preach to anybody or push any agendas. We're doing it by simply making the information available. A couple shows have done this successfully. Uh, everyone knows the difference between digital TV and terrestrial TV. Terrestrial is free to air, uh, NTA, ART, that a lot of people have access to. Um, shows like Sugar, for example, MTV Sugar, um, have come out to address the stigma of HIV and the information of HIV. They also have the show exist in radio forms. Um, now, this, we are able to watch Sugar on YouTube or MTV, but the guy in um, a rural area, disconnected, might be able to only encounter Sugar through a ra the radio program. And that is what I'm talking about. It is not to eliminate those people who already consume content, but to be able to include those people who are disconnected. When you're thinking of creating content, think bigger. Think wider, think larger. We have a lot of people to consume this content, and we can't limit it to social media or limit it to just MTV or one of the digital channels. We have to find multiple ways to get this across. Radio, radio, TV, terrestrial TV, print, and so on and so forth. Other examples are Jennifer's Diary, Super Story. They're entertaining content to certain people, but if you look deeper, you are able to pass across messages. Messages, information that you and I may really probably think we know, but the man down the street doesn't. And a lot of things have happened recently. There's been a lot of talk about rape culture. There's been a lot of talk about consent. And when you go on social media, go on Facebook, for example, you see certain comments. And some people are already saying, no, this is not acceptable. Let's cancel them. That is not necessarily going to work. If we're going to develop as a society, we need to make the information available to those who don't, who know, and those who don't. Because information is the key. Don't exclude inform. People are actually living out there. And it's, it might be shocking to you, but at the end of the day, there are so many people that don't know a lot of things. You might think that this is um, something that you've known since you were a child, but the next, part, the next person next to you doesn't know that this information exists, and they don't know that this is what they're supposed to do, or this is how they're supposed to operate. Now, in passing across this information, in the past, people have tended to be quite preachy about it. And this is not what I'm suggesting. I'm not saying that you jam your ideology down someone's throat, 
No. I think you create entertaining content first, because that's, that's what's going to make people come back. But in that entertaining content, you should be able to pass across themes of information. Information, positive information, factual information. Informal learning is the goal. But what if I need to tell to you, like Femi or Oshobo, and talk to him about the roles and responsibilities of a senator, a governor? What are Nigeria's offices? You know, what is our governor supposed to do for you? What is the senator supposed to do for you? What if we have inspirational TV shows? that talks and shows these people in exemplary lights. Maybe that might inspire them to be able to grow and have a sense of responsibility towards their people as opposed to having a mentality to go and steal. These are things that we need to think of. Because if people don't understand the responsibilities and roles of the jobs they do, then how are they supposed to make or do better than their predecessors? Integrated multimedia content is available. One day, according to the theory of micro solutions for macro problems, everything will align. I feel and I strongly believe that if we're able to, as people, reach out and communicate, if we're able to work on TV programs, if we're able to work, work on radio programs, if we're able to tell stories on our Facebook pages, on our Twitter, on our Instagram, on print, newspaper, uh, magazines, articles, different formats. If we're able to talk to people on a human level, on a normal level, using content as a vehicle, I honestly believe that the biggest problem, one of the biggest problems we face as Nigerians, which is our mentality, will begin to change eventually. Thank you.